Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Stephen and Jenna. Uh, we're going to bring the songs and the uh, preaching of God's word with you this morning. So let's just open up with a word of prayer and let's begin. So, Holy Father, thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you so much for your people that have joined together uh, to sing your praises and to hear from your word. Uh, bless our time together this morning, Lord, and just draw us closer to uh, the Savior that loved us enough to die for our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're going to start off with this one song here called I Am Thine. O oh Lord, I am thine, O oh Lord. <clears throat> Sing another one here. This might be familiar to you. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on the everlasting arms. <clears throat>
the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, with my Lord so near. You've got nothing to fear in Jesus Christ. You've got peace. He came to give you peace, came to give you joy, and you can always lean on those everlasting arms. Lean on them through prayer. Lean on them through reading God's word. Amen. Let's turn to page 483 for us. <clears throat> oh, how I love Jesus. Let's sing this uh, last one out. <clears throat> Stick around. We will be right back with a message from God's Word. Thank you for singing with us this morning. All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. If you got your Bible with you, uh, I'm in Jeremiah chapter nine. Jeremiah chapter nine. <clears throat> You can go down to uh, verses 23 and 24. Just going to read these verses and we're going to dive right into the message this morning. Uh, the Bible says in Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. That I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. You know, we live in a society where people become famous uh, for various reasons, but a lot of times, uh, why? It's because maybe their strength, right? You think about athletes and stuff that they're able to accomplish physically. Uh, could be because of their uh, intelligence. Uh, you can think of, you know, some inventors or, or scientists, right? CEOs of companies uh, or their riches, right? Just people that have a lot of money and people will flock towards uh, people in these different groups, right? Because they become famous for these physical uh, attributes, right? And they see them as successful and they want to listen to what they have to say so that they can be successful just like them. And the reason for this and these people glory in these things, the reason for this is because uh, man looks on the outward appearance, right? We judge on the outward appearance. But the Bible says that the Lord trieth the hearts. And it's uh, interesting in verse 24 that God looks at these things. He says, hey, 
Don't glory in your strength. Don't glory in your wisdom. Don't glory in your riches. If you're going to glory in anything, glory in the fact that you know and that you understand me. And I want to look at a couple of things that God wants us to know and understand about him uh, that I believe is going to be a blessing for us and also will allow us to give him some glory. So let's pray and um, let's turn and, and see what the Bible has to say about things we can know about God. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this this day, Lord. I, I thank you for uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for this perfect book that we can come to, to learn of you, to, to know you, Lord. Lord, I thank you so much that you've just made it completely clear and known to us, Lord. I thank you for sending your Son to die on the cross for our sins, Lord, making that known to us, Lord, your salvation. And Lord, I pray that you would just um, speak to your people this morning, uh, help us to learn more of you, Lord, that we can draw closer to you, to love you better, and to bring you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And so thinking about things that God wants us to know and understand about him, the very first thing uh, I want to turn to Proverbs chapter 22, the very first thing that I, we need to know about God is that God wants us to know that we can trust his word. God wants us to know that he can trust is we can trust his word. And this is important because we're going to look at a couple of other things that we can know about God, but it's all going to be found in his word. So uh, the very first thing is we need to understand that the emphasis that God puts on his word. And the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 22, verses 19 through 21, it says that thy trust may be in the Lord. I have made known to thee this day, even to thee. Have not I written to thee excellent things in counsels in knowledge that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. God saying here that he wants you to know the certainty of the words of truth. He wants you to be able to trust his word, that when God says it, it's true. The Bible says, Jesus said uh, about his disciples uh, praying to the Lord to sanctify them through his truth. And what he said, thy word is truth. And God's magnified his word above his own name. And so if we're going to learn about God, we got to trust this Bible and trust that it is true. And the Bible is filled with just fulfilled prophecies of the rise and fall of nations, uh, the manner of birth, life, and death of Jesus Christ. You can read about civilizations and leaders in, in, in the Bible that even up until recently, uh, man has only confirmed via archaeological evidence the things that the Bible has spoken about for thousands of years, right? And so, and, and that just continues to happen. Science and, and archaeology and all these historians only find things that confirm what the Bible has already said. And even Jesus Christ, when he was on the earth, when he was tempted of the devil, what did he do? He quoted scripture to combat against the devil. And when he was preaching and when he was making points, he was referencing the Old Testament, referencing Abraham, Moses, uh, quoting Old Testament prophets. Why? Because the scriptures are true. And that was the power of God's word. And so if it was good enough for Jesus Christ uh, to use, and it was good enough for Jesus Christ to show that God's word is true, then we can trust God's words also. And Jesus Christ used that as an example. Example, especially when he was um, uh, re resisting the temptation of the devil to show us the power of God's word and the certainty, it says in Proverbs chapter 22, that we can trust God's word. And that's a powerful promise that God wants us to know the certainty of his word. And, and not only that, but to drive this point home in Deuteronomy chapter 30, not only does he put so much emphasis on the truth of his word and that we can trust it, but he's made it accessible to us. He hasn't hidden it away. He's made it available for, for us to come to every day. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11, <clears throat> this is God talking to the children of Israel. He says, for this commandment, which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. In other words, God's not hiding his word up in heaven and making you have to send somebody to go get his words and, and fetch it for you so you can hear what God has to say. He says, neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, who shall go over the sea for us and, and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. But now here in verse 14, but the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth 
and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. Since the beginning, God has made his word accessible to his people and God has made his word available to and accessible to you, Christian, in the Bible. And so that's why we put so much emphasis in teaching and preaching the Bible and the scriptures. Why? Because this is God's word and this is how God communicates to us and God has put an emphasis and let us know, hey, you can trust what I have to say and I've written it to you in my word. So let's see a couple of things that I believe are going to be a blessing for us, things that God wants us to know for sure in his words and promises from his book. Uh, 1 John <clears throat> chapter 5, let's go to 1 John chapter 5, let's see what the Bible says, 1 John chapter 5. Here's one beautiful thing that God wants us to know. 1 John chapter 5, verse 11, it says, And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. You know what these verses are saying? These verses are saying that if you trust Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and you have Jesus Christ living inside you, you can know that one day when you die, you are going to live with him forever and ever and ever in heaven because you have eternal life. And he wants you to know that this morning. He wants you to know that. And so Christian, if you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, he wants you not to doubt whether if one day when you die, you'll see him because of things you've done on this earth. No. If you have Jesus Christ, he says, he that hath the Son hath life. You've got that promise. You've got eternal life. You have it through Jesus Christ. And if you haven't trusted Jesus Christ, I would encourage you to do so. And what do we mean by that? Well, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. All you need to do is acknowledge to God that you're a sinner, and trust Jesus Christ, and ask him to forgive you for your sins because of what he did on the cross, because of what he did on the cross, to forgive you of your sins and become your Lord and Savior. And you know, if you do that, you know what the Bible says? Jesus Christ will forgive you of your sins, and then you can be in that verse, in verse 12, he that hath the Son hath life. Because the later part of that verse says that he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. And so do you have life this morning? Do you have Jesus Christ? Have you trusted him as your Savior? If you have, he wants you to know for certain that you have eternal life. That one day when you die, you are going to see him and you're going to live with him forever and ever and ever. That's a promise that God wants us to know out of his word. That's a beautiful promise. Let's look at another, another verse here. <coughs> actually just a couple of verses down another thing that God wants us to know in verse 14 and 15 of uh, first John chapter 5 it says and this is the confidence that we have in him in Jesus Christ that if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us and if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him so here's the second thing that God wants us to know okay is that he hears our prayers. He hears our prayers. It says this is a confidence that we have in him. We we know that he hears us. God hears our prayers. Now, he may not answer my prayer the way that I think he's going to answer it or maybe the way that I want or hope him uh, hope that he answers it. But I know that if I pray according to his will, God hears my prayers and he's going to answer it. God takes joy in just hearing the prayers of the saints. I want to show you in Hebrews chapter 4, God encourages us to come and pray to him, and he hears us. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, God invites us. He says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And the Bible says in, in James that the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So just like God wants us to know the certainty of the words of truth, God wants us to understand that his word is perfect and that we can trust it. And he invites us to read 
his word so that we understand more about him, well, God also wants us to pray to him because we know that he hears our prayers and God will work things in our life. But we got to pray and we got to make our requests known to him. And God delights in those things. He invites us to come boldly. That's access that we have to the throne. And so these are powerful promises that God wants us to know for certainty because you'll come across people and maybe this is you this morning. Maybe you think to yourself, well, I don't know if God loves me. I don't know if God hears my prayers. I've been praying for a while and I haven't seen anything answered. I'm not sure if God hears my prayers. Well, God says in his word that he does hear us. He does hear us. And so that's confidence that we have to keep coming and just keep believing and have faith, knowing that the God of the universe that framed all this and that has spoken to us about how the world was created and has spoken to us about how the world is going to end and given us these promises that we can trust on, that we can believe when he says that he hears our prayers, that we can believe when he says that we have eternal life through Jesus Christ, his son. And that's how we keep up, we keep going in our faith, believing and trusting in God and just waiting for him patiently for the things that he's going to do in our life now and also for the stuff that he has waiting for us. And so Christian, I would encourage you, keep leaning on Jesus Christ and keep trusting him because his word is true and he hears our prayers. Uh, let's see an another thing, another thing uh, that God wants us to know out of his word because he says even more so than you know your riches and, and your strength and, and any, anything that you have, your wisdom, any of those things, those things that are going to fade away, you can glory in that f the fact that you know the God of the universe through the pages of this book. This is the last thing in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. This is a beautiful promise, something that we know from God's word. And God reminds us of this here. He says in Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Can I tell you, if you're saved here this morning and you love God, you're trusting God, you're reading the Bible, you're praying to him, you're fellowship, fellowshipping with him, I just want to encourage you in, in, in God's word that you can know that all things, all things are working together for good. He's working it together for good. And that's a powerful promise for me personally, because there's plenty of plenty of times in my life where I don't understand everything that God is doing, right? I don't understand all the situations that I'm in, why things are, are happening the way that they're happening at the times that they're happening. But if I can trust this promise that even if I don't know and understand it, God's in control of the situation and that he's working all those things together for good, well, then I can have peace in those moments of uncertainty because I'm trusting in the God that's holding my future in his hands. And God wants you to know that today, Christian, that we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. He's working those things together for good. And another thing that he does, which is exciting is, if you're saved, the Bible talks about working out your own salvation. In other words, God's working some things out of you. One of the fruits of the Spirit is goodness. God's working some things out of you and using you. If you allow him to use you, he'll use you for his own glory. And that's a beautiful thing because God can actually work things out of your life and his plan to work things together for good in someone else's life. So every time you pray for somebody that might be sick, pray for somebody who's not saved, pray for somebody for strength and victory, those are all ways that God is now able to get some glory from your life and God's able to work some things out for good in other people's lives because you've just committed that to his care and keeping. So God can use you, don't ever underestimate, no matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, no matter how rich you are, no matter how strong you are, any of those things, if you just give it to God, God can actually use you and God can get some fruit and some enduring things out of your life. And he's working all things together for good. So don't ever, ever underestimate that. And more so than riches and intelligence and all those things that we read about before, these are the things that are going to matter in eternity when we're living with him forever and ever. And so I just pray that this was an encouragement to you this morning. Just a couple of promises from God's word of things that we can know, that we can trust, that we can rely on because God said it and that's good enough. And so we know that God's word is true. We know that if we trust in Jesus Christ, we have eternal life and a home prepared in heaven waiting for us. We know that God hears our prayers and we know that he's working all things together for good. 
And so Christian, I just pray that you keep on keeping on, keep on trusting God and uh, keep on being faithful to these uh, these services and, and keep tuning in and keep being faithful to the other people in your life, uh, whether the lost or the saved, uh, and, and, and just keep trusting God. And, and one day, if we don't see each other face to face, we're going to see each other in heaven. And that's a powerful promise from God's word. So let's close here with prayer and, and, and thank you for your kind attention this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. And again, I just thank you so much for the promises from your word, Lord. Help us to seek them out daily. Help us to seek them out fervently, Lord, so that we can learn more about you, understand more about you, to learn to love you more, and that we can bring you some more glory, Lord. I thank you for your people that have joined together today. Bless them throughout this week. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you again for tuning in. Uh, we love you. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you next week. God bless you.